out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Bank and Pam. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. We rolling, man. We in these 33 years of prison stories, man. So, everybody out there, I need y'all to subscribe. If you ain't subscribed, if you liking this channel, you liking this content, please take the time to hit that subscribe button. Share these videos, like these videos, so we can spread this stuff all around. It helps move the channel. It helps the channel get seen by more people, and that's what we want. That's our ultimate goal, so we can spread this positive energy. So, TBP, stand up, man. Let's spread the word so we can get this thing moving and moving. 2022 is our year. We're going to do it. Um, with that being said, this video right here, um, I spoke about this video a couple of times in uh, other platforms or whatever, but I didn't really go tell the entire story. I've been prompted to tell this story by uh, my brother, uh, Josiah Graham Esquire. Um, y'all who've been following me and y'all seen the video of me on the boat with Josiah out there in Miami. And I'm talking to the fellas, his, his uh, comrades or whatnot. And I'm explaining the story. This is the story that I was explaining. And um, he told me to tell the whole story. So that's what I'm going to try to do, attempt to do, to go back in my memory bank about this. But it was a crazy time for me. I want to set the um, stage for y'all. You got to remember I was in prison um, not long, maybe a couple of years before this incident occurred. Um, I was kind of like already known in prison or, you know, had a little little buzz, a little name for myself because, you know, I went through the jail and I was fighting in the jail a lot, you know, not because I wanted to, you know, and, and not to be innocent neither, not to say uh, all of the uh, incidents wasn't my fault. A lot of them wasn't my fault, but maybe some of them was, you know, you know, speaking my mind and just standing up for myself or whatnot can always cause friction and always cause people, you know, to get in their feelings. But it is what it is. And by now I've been in prison a couple of years. I didn't I didn't got in a couple of fights in prison and um, then had to put that work in because <laughs> they coming for your head in there. I'm trying to tell you. So, you know, I had to, I had to do what I had to do. So it was already, like I say, a little known that, you know, that I do what I got to do. And I was already boxing with, with, the, with the boxing thing. So, you know, like I said, I was looked at in a certain way. But mind you, this prison, you know, you got dudes in there. They don't care who you is or what you is. They still going to test that stuff and see what's going on. So, you know, with this incident, I can remember um, I was uh, I had already started a, a store box, man. And I told y'all what a store box is, you know, uh, it's the equivalent out here, I guess, in the streets to like a loan shop because you you you, you got items and you got uh, merchandise that people need, you know, foods, you know, uh, knickknacks or whatever, you know, um, cigarettes, cakes, chips, food, commissary merchandise, Zuzus and Wham Whams, what we call them in there. So... I had the store box, meaning that you come and get something for me if you didn't have it. And, you know, we go to store like in there. We go to store like once a week. It depends on what institution you're on. Back then, I think it was like once a week or, you know, later on, it became once every two weeks. But you go to store on, on those increments. Them the only times you can go to store. So if you run out of what you have before the store come, then you out back. You got to wait till, you know, you go back to store or you go see the store box, man, which, is, you know, I was one of. So when you go see the store box, man, you borrow something from them, it's like 100% interest. You know, if you go borrow soda, you owe two sodas. Four, you owe eight. You know what I'm saying? Six, you owe 12. No matter what it is, just whatever item you got from them, you owe 100% interest back. Now, that seems kind of crazy, but that's just how prison is. You know, and it's a uh, no-nonsense business. You owe, you know, if you, it's, it all depends on the discipline that you have. If you gonna go borrow something, then you know that be, that's because you didn't budget your stuff right. If you budget your stuff right, you gonna make it from week to week or two weeks or whatever it is you got to make it. But some dudes ain't had no discipline, and then they go borrow from the store box man, and then they in debt because they owe twice as much as what they would have had to spend if they just would have had enough discipline to wait and go get it themselves. Plus, they put themselves on the hook on the line because 
if you buy from the store box man and you don't pay him, then it's going to be repercussions, you know. It's going to be repercussions. It's more likely that repercussions is going to be some blood, you know. Because if you let somebody borrow something from you and they don't pay you, it's going to spread like wildfire. And when that spreads, then everybody going to try to come borrow stuff from your store box and then nobody going to pay you. Therefore, your business is going to be shut down and you're going to be shut down as, you know, labeled as a sucker. You know, and when you labeled as a sucker in prison, then life going to be... <laughs> Three times worse than what it already is because you're already living in hell. It's going to be three times worse and three times hot in this hell called prison. So when you run that store box like I did, you got to run it with an iron fist. And you got to also know that at any time, you may have to put some work in. So whatever you accum accumulate or whatever you have, you know, you can lose all of that in one day when one dude don't pay you. It don't even matter what it is. If he owe you a dollar and he don't pay you and he make it be known that he don't pay you, then you're on the hook. You can have a, a multi-thousand dollar business where you make thousands of dollars a month and you might have to go ahead and put some work in for a dollar and lose all of that. You know what I'm saying? Lose your position, go to jail, you know, get all your stuff packed up, whatever, whatever. They may inventory your stuff, see you got too much. They may recognize that you run the store box, give you a, a, a racketeering charge or something like that and, and confiscate all your stuff. So you take all of those risks in order to, you know, get that gain. Sometimes it's not worth it. Most of the time it's really not worth it. In retrospect, looking back, it's not worth it. Because, like I say, you're always in danger because it's always going to be a fool that's going to play with you and ain't got your money. It's always going to be somebody think he can out-talk you, uh, out-con you, slick you, and give you a, a game. All of that is non void. Especially when you was dealing with me when I was running my store box. I ain't going to tell you no lie. I ran my store box with an iron fist. You're going to have to pay me. You're going you to have to pay me. But I let it be known when you came and got my stuff. Don't come to me with no foolishness. Don't come with no game. If you get my money, have my money. That's the only thing I'm accepting. I'm, a, I'm not accepting no excuses. I'm not accepting no delays. I'm not accepting none of that. That's the mentality that I had now. Man, you back in, 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 in my day. You know, of course, I'm a different man now. But back then, that's how I carried it. And, 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 I, and I, um, I had zero tolerance for it because I didn't spend my money to get this stuff and I'm not going to let nobody take it away from me. You know, now, am I putting myself in the heat of the fire in harm's way? Absolutely. But at the time, I didn't view it as such. I viewed it as a, a, a business, a way that I didn't have to spend all of my money because with that store box, you got everything coming in that you need. And you 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 basically eating for free after you pay the first time and get over the hump. You making money and you don't have to go to the store no more. You don't have to spend your money. You can stack your money. You know, it's 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 some type of uh, a form of entrepreneurship, but it's just you know, in the uh, 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 environment that we was in, it was called something different. So that's what I did. I ran the store box, you know, and like I said, it was known. If you get my stuff, you gotta pay it. If you don't, I'm coming to see you, and I ain't coming talking. You know, I'm not coming talking. You know, so anyway, you know, a lot of people used to borrow from me, man, because I eventually I had like the biggest store box in the block that I was in. So if somebody ran out of something, it was other store boxes in the block, but I had the biggest one, you know? So this dude may run out of uh, 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 inventory himself. So this dude may run out of inventory. I ain't never run out of inventory. So if you didn't even want to deal with me, you could go to another store, but you can go to another store, but he don't have what you exactly looking for. Nine times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10, I had it. So Eventually, all roads led back to me. So, dudes had to borrow from me anyway. It's like 80 some people in the block. And out of 80 some people in that block, man, I'm telling you, at, at any given time, 60, 60 to 65 of them owed me something, you know. So, I was doing pretty good with the store box business, you know, because like I said, I ran it with an iron fist. Dudes knew to get my stuff, they had to pay me back. So, I always got my money and my, my stuff started stacking up and accumulating. Um, I can remember this 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 little white dude at, at, at the time. You know, he got money because he used to actually get the weed in. Every now and then he get that weed in. He had somebody just bring him the weed so he get the weed. So, you know, you can imagine he a white dude, he get the weed. So, he, you know, getting weed to other dudes, you know what I'm saying? You know, more, more like protectors, more like enforcers. Being that he getting them weed, dudes going to have his back and make sure don't nobody just come take his stuff because... You know, to be told, you know, in prison, white dude, man, he's, he got a little bit worse than the average person. 
out here on the street, the dynamics are different. The black man has got a lot worse in prison. It's just the opposite because prison is predominantly black or Hispanic or any other color, you know, but white people are usually the minority in prison. So they usually have it a little bit rougher than the average person because dudes will straight take advantage of them, you know, just like that. So being that he got the weed though, you know, dudes gonna look out for him. Dudes gonna, you know, have his back because dudes want to get high and more, more than often they want to get high for free. So that's a small price for them to pay is to make sure don't nobody bother them so they can keep getting high. They don't have to spend no money. Um, well, this dude came and borrowed a little stuff from me one time and uh, he had borrowed from me before. Not often because like I say, most of the time he don't need nothing. But like I say, you smoking that weed, you get the munchies, you run out of food, who you gonna come see? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he comes see me, he gets some stuff from me and lo and behold, he can't pay. You know, his money got messed up. Something happened, so he telling me on time to pay the money, he ain't got my money, right? So I'm like, you ain't got my money. So he was like, nah, but look, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to do that, right? Well, I won't try to hurt none of that. I'm like, I need my money, you know what I'm saying? He tell me that, look, I be getting the weed, you know, I be getting the weed. I'm going to give you the weed, man. I look out for you. I'm going to give you way more than what I owe you. I'm going to, you know, when the weed come in, I got you, I got you. Woo. Now, at the time... I had not, you know, uh, dabbled in no drugs in prison at all, so weed ain't mean nothing to me. I had a thriving um, business, you know what I'm saying, with my store box. I don't want no weed. I don't know nothing about no weed, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't never smoked weed in my life to this day, so I don't know nothing about weed. Plus, I didn't know the value of weed in prison. So, I'm screaming on him, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blood mad. I'm ready to go take everything out of his cell, your TV. I want everything for that little bit of money you owe me. So... Um, he like pleading with me, telling me this, that, and the third. No, I'm telling him, look, man, you got to get my money. So I go holler at my homeboy, Boo. Shout out, Boo, my, my man, man. You know what I'm saying? My my, my, my big bro. Um, and I tell him what the situation is. I said, man, this dude don't get my money. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put that work in on him, man, you know. So he telling me, what he, I said, man, he tell me something. He going to give me some weed. He says, weed? I said, how much he tell me he going to give you? He, he said, how much he tell me he going to give you? I said, man, he tell me give me an ounce of weed. I don't want to. He said, an ounce of weed? He said, man, you know how much money you can make with that, man? You better get the weed. Woo, woo, woo. So I'm like, all right, okay, you sure? He said, yeah, man, I can help you. Woo, woo, woo. So I eventually tell him, he can give me the weed. He give me the weed. You know, I give it to Boo. Boo chop it up. Woo, woo, woo. I make, man, 10, 15, 20 times the money that he owed me. But being that he didn't pay me on time, this is what you could possibly consider, and it ain't no possibly consider it. This is larceny, but like I say, just the way I was living at the time, this was my mind frame. So now I know he can get the weed. I know how much money you can make off the weed. So now I start leaning on him, and I tell him, "Look, since you um was late on that money, man, and you pay me whatever, but every time you get that weed, you got to break me off. You got to give me some, you know." So he was like, "Well, I'm like, yeah, you got to give me some every time you get it. You ain't got to give me an ounce all it, but you got to break me off some of that weed every time you get some of that weed." So he scared, he don't know what to do. He tell me, okay, he agrees. So now we got an agreement. So every time he get the weed now, he break me off a little bit of the weed, right? So, it, I mean, <laughs> it's a great deal for me. I don't know what it is for him. But like I say, I, like I say, I, this is times we living in. So I won't really want concern about him. I was worried about me. I was worried about getting mine. And that's all I cared about. And if he didn't get it, of course, I probably would, you know, put some work in on him, you know, and he won't build like that or nothing. I won't go crush him, crush him. I'm going to put the Bethlehem on him or nothing, but I was going to show him up, you know, tap him up a little bit. And he knew that. So that's why he made sure that he had what I asked him to have. So now he paying me, man, on the regular and, it, and everything is going smooth. So he got this uh, great big dude in the park, man. He one of the biggest dudes in the block, right? One of the biggest dudes on the compound, if not the big, biggest. His name was Big Raymond, right? They called him Big Raymond. You know, that's the name. He was a big dude, probably about 6'8", six, 6'9", six, somewhere up in there. But he weighed in excess of 300 pounds, at least about 320, 330. And I'm talking about muscle size. All he do is lift weights and eat <laughs> and walk around the compound looking like a, a Sasquatch. You know what I'm saying? So he... 
Me and him ain't never really had too many conversations anyway. I used to see him chopping it up with Boo a lot. Boo, my homeboy, that was like one of my better friends in there, like my brother. But I used to see him chopping it up with Boo a lot, but me and him ain't never really had too many dealers. So now all of a sudden I started noticing he's staring at me. He mean mugging me. He's staring at me all the time, right? I catch his eye looking at me, but he got this grit on his face like, you know, like he detests me. Now he done came and barred for me a couple of times. And then when he come ball, he got that type of, now he a big dude and he lifting weights and he got that type of mentality like he a tough, tough guy, like he a touch all. He might come ball for me like, hey, you you got some chips in there? I be like, yeah, yeah man, you know. Well, let me get a couple of bags. And I'm like, man, this, I said, yeah, you get some, man, pipe down a little bit, man, just let me get, the, you know. And I, I give it to him, he always paid me back or whatever. But his attitude, you know what I'm saying, was rubbing me the wrong way. Now, most people would look at it like, think, well, you know, average dude say something like that to the bank, he gonna do woo woo woo. So they thinking maybe I might, may not say nothing to him because of his size or whatever, his reputation. But it wasn't that. Trust me, it wasn't that. I just was doing so good that I didn't need the drama nor that I want to smoke because of how I'm living. I ain't really looking for problems. I'm trying to avoid problems. But if problems come, I'm gonna deal with them. Yeah, emphatically, without a doubt, I'm gonna deal with them. But you know, maybe in his mind, that's what he thought too. The, being that I didn't really come off on him super, super hard and super tough, you know, when he talked all aggressive, did I was jive a little timid of him or whatever. Mm, dead wrong, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, as time went on, he steadily just looking at me and just gritting on me all the time. And then I remember one incident came and I'm talking to Boo and he walked up and he said something and Boo said, oh, hold on, man, I'm talking. He was like, man, pfft. you know, looked at me like gave me that look. So I'm like, man... He walk away, and I asked Boo, I'm like, man, what's up with old boy, man? He said, man, I don't know what's up with man. I'm a like, I said, man, you better tell him to stay out of my way, man, because he, he really rubbed me wrong, bro. So Boo was like, I'm going to say something to him. I'm going to say something to him. Man, don't even worry about him. He, he, uh, he harmless. I'm like, all right. So about a couple of weeks later, I see him doing the same thing. He's just looking at me, gritting on me. So I asked him, I pull up on him, I said, man, what's up, man? You, you got a problem with me? He tell me something, man, man, get out my face, man. Don't come up, ask me nothing. You know, F wrong with you. I said, man, man, F you. You know, so we jive getting ready to square off. Now, I don't really want to rumble this big joker, but I will rumble him at the heat of the moment, and I'll go get that Bethlehem later on and take care of whatever is left on the table. Straight like that, but, I, you know what I'm saying, I ain't backing down from no one, period. You know, so Boo come on, man, he break this thing up and everything. Woo, woo, he go on about his business and he steady running his mouth. He talking about, I don't like that dude. I don't like him. You know I don't like him. You know what I'm saying? You know, F him, woo, woo, woo. And I'm like, man, this 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 dude wildin', man. You know, in my mind, he 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 asking for something he really don't know what he asking for. In his mind, he probably feel like I'm asking for something that I don't know what I'm asking for. Now, the background story on this joker is, number one, he locked up for murder. Right. Whether he did it or not, nobody knows because a lot of dudes in there are locked up for things that they didn't do, you know, contrary to popular belief. But he locked up for murder and he locked up for like a vicious murder where he just like, you know, was beefing with somebody, pulled up on him, to my understanding, pulled up on him at a um, stoplight, got out, blew his head off with a sawed off shotgun. You know what I'm saying? So this is already known throughout, you know, the, the institution. So I got that knowledge in my head of you know, who he is and what he did. Then I'm looking at his size. Then I'm looking at he done, he done, I mean, he done straight savage a couple of dudes in the block. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he done beat dudes up like viciously. So I can remember one time incident where he got mad because the ice machine was empty, right? You know, dudes be going outside, working out, doing their thing, coming back in. You know, they want to get some cold water or something, go take a shower, whatever, whatever. So he come back in one day, he ain't, ain't no ice in the ice machine. Dudes be getting a lot of ice. Some dudes get bags of ice, cups of ice, whatever, but the ice gone. So he mad, he slammed the ice machine down. Who the F got all the ice, man? Y'all dudes keep getting all the goddamn on ice. Woo, woo, woo. I'm tired of this stuff. Y'all gonna leave some of this ice in here. Y'all gonna stop taking all this ice in your cell, being all set. He just going off. So another dude was walking up to the ice machine and opened the ice machine, I believe, and, and won't nothing in it. He said, did you, did you just heard me say won't no ice? So the dude turned around and said, man, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm looking to see if it's my... Man, he grabbed the dude 
and pick the dude up, man. He slammed the dude into the ice machine, man. He literally took this dude airborne. And the dude probably weighed about a ball 70, 175. He slammed the dude into the ice machine, man. Head first, airborne. Boom, like a like a rag dog. Man, he broke the dude collarbone and everything. You know what I'm saying? And dude ain't never had no beef with him. Dude won't bother him or nothing. This is just an incident because he was in his feelings and the dude happened to go to the ice machine. So I can remember that happened. I, I remember seeing that myself. So I already know. And he got away with it. You know what I'm saying? He got away with it because dude ain't tell on him or nothing. Dude took that L, went on to medical, got his, you know, collarbone fixed. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't tell what happened to him or whatever. He said he failed, hurt himself. Boom, boom, boom. They bring him back. He move out the block. They put him somewhere else. But he got away with it. Now the whole pod see that. Now that's that's a demonstration. So when you see stuff like that, well, me anyway. When I see stuff like that, I inventory that stuff in my mind so I know who I'm dealing with and what I'm dealing with. So, you know, like I say, he aggressive, he big. I done seen some of his work. So when you when you, when you coming at me and you talking this foolishness like that, then I, I got all this in the back of my mind. Now, my number one thing in prison and from day one and, and, and until the day, uh, the last day that I walked about, I ain't going to get hurt. <laughs> I'm not going to get hurt. I'm not going to let nobody hurt me. Period. And I don't care what it costs to stop somebody from hurting me, that's what I'm willing to pay. Because I ain't going to get hurt. I ain't built to be hurt. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little dude. I ain't going to let nobody just do no anything to me. And like I say, I'm willing to go all out if that's what the case may be. If I, if I, if I lose or lose my life, then so be it. But I'm going out fighting. That's a fact. So I know these things about me, but like I say, other people may got that impression about me, but some people may be unsure or whatever. But I know this is who I am and I know what I'm going to do. So as long as I know what I'm going to do and I'm always going to put myself in a position to win, I ain't fearing nobody. The only thing I'm fearing is what, what's going to be the after effect for whatever happens. So whenever I come in confrontation with a dude, that's my mentality. My mentality is not to get hurt and to do whatever it takes not to get hurt. So all the stuff he's talking to me, it ain't even it, it, it ain't even registering to me like you going to do something to me. It's registering to me is... Man, don't make me do nothing to you. You know what I'm saying? So that's the way I'm looking at it. I don't know how he was looking at it because that's how he was, man. He just kept nagging at me. He kept staring at me. He kept, you know, making little sly remarks. And I'm letting I'm letting the foolishness go. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, because he ain't touched me. He ain't got all up on me. He ain't invaded my space. He ain't took nothing from me. So he ain't violated to the 10th degree yet, but he, he out of pocket. He definitely out of pocket. And like I say, he's... Now he's verbalizing his dislike for me, right? So now we got to understand, I know where you coming from. So like I said, I'm on alert at all times, right? So, you know, time go on, man. You know, he, uh, um, I was down there playing poker one day, right? I told y'all about my poker things. I was a poker dude. Every day I'm, I'm, I'm on this poker. I'm on the grind. I'm trying to make money. You know, I'm caught up in the adrenaline of playing poker and so on and so forth. So, you know, sometimes I told you we be playing poker, man. We be at that poker table all day long. You know, from morning, you know, every every cell break, every every count time, we back at it, we back at it. It be all day. Poker all day long. So, I'm playing, man. You be at the table sometimes. You eat at the table, man. You, you don't want to leave the table, you know. So, you eat at the table and everything. You fix your little soup or something. Eat your soup and, you know, keep on playing cards or whatever. So, I'm at the table one day, I'm playing, man, we've been playing all day, I'm tired and, you know, sitting on this hard steel and, and grinding all day, and man, I, I go to stretch and I yawn and I look up, and he leaning on the rails on the top tier looking down at me. I mean, like, staring right at me, like, you know, he mean mugging me, so I'm looking at this chump, man, I'm like, Psst. I notice he's looking, I'm like, what's up, man? And he just bark off, what's up, what you want to be up? I said, man, this dude over here, why? I said, man, you better pipe down, though. He said, man, you don't tell me what to do. I told you I don't like you anyway. What's up? So I'm like, whoa. Now you you put me on the spot because, you know, you, you're, making my, <laughs> you're making me get goosebumps. And everybody looking at me is like, you know, like everybody looking at me like, what bank you going to do? And I'm like, man, you better, you know, you better pipe down. So my dude, boo, pull up on him. Man, I said, man, what's up with you, man? I told you about messing with bank, man. You better leave him alone, man. Man, man I F that dude. I don't like him anyway. You know, he said, man, I'm trying to tell you, man. <laughs> you better leave bank alone, man. I'm telling you, dog. Woo, woo, woo. Tell him that, man. You know, boo, pull up on me. He said, man, I didn't talk to him. I told him, woo, woo, woo. He said, man, I said, man, listen, I'm telling you, bro. 
that dude right there, he, he, he gonna get hurt, man, messing with me, man. I'm telling you, though, I said he ain't gonna keep on popping off at the mouth with me and threatening me and talking to me like that. I'm telling you, though, and I'm trying to avoid it because, like I say, I ain't trying to get in trouble. I ain't trying to lose what I got going on and all that. But sometimes you could be doing that. And you could get you can you you can lose yourself. You could put yourself in harm's way because you worrying about um what you got to lose, you know what I'm saying, like monetarily, which has no value or what you got to lose physically. You know what I'm saying? So my you know, I wasn't calculating all that at this time, man. You like I say, I'm young, I'm, I'm fresh in prison, I ain't even got five years under my belt. So, you know, all of this stuff ain't I ain't thinking on the level that I was able to think on later on down the line while I was in prison. I'm thinking on a whole, you know what I'm saying, different level, more immature level. I'm going on raw emotions, raw, you know, heart. Like, I ain't I ain't worried about nothing because push come to shove, I'm going to do what I got to do. But at the same time, like I say, I was putting myself in harm's way because... I won't do it, I'm building up his bravado. I was building up his, you know, his, his courage. Like, yeah, I got him shook. Oh, yeah, he scared of me. I'm quite sure in my mind, in retrospect, that's what he thought, right? So, like I say, time go on, man, and, and just little small incidents with him. Every other week or every so often, it's something he doing. I'm going up, I'm coming in for wreck. When I'm going out for wreck one day. He coming in from wreck. We pass each other on the stairway. He bumped me. You know what I'm saying? I said, man. And I looked at him like, I was like, man, you, you, hey, man, you really tripping. He was like, what? What? I'm like, all right, you got it, bro. You got it. I leave. You know what I'm saying? Let the situation go again. I went to Boo that day and I told him. I said, listen here, man. Your homeboy just bumped me in the stairway again, man, talking that bull, bull job. I said, let me tell you something. I said, this is my good word. The next time he cross me or do something to me, man, he gonna get it, dog. I, I'm telling you, he ain't no more warnings, ain't no more nothing. The next time he, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm gonna give him that work, bro. He was like, man, I'm telling you, man, he, he big, man, but he don't, he don't, he don't mean nothing, man. He just don't like you, man, cause he say you got store box and and you think you this and that, and you know, you little bit of dude, you think you running stuff and all that, man. But I done told him, man, what you about and you leave you alone, you know, woo, woo, woo. And Boo got that little squeaky voice, man. Boo a sneaker too, see, Boo small, but we come up in the city together, Boo box and everything. So Boo be tricking dudes, dudes, they, dudes think he weak or soft cause he got that little voice like, man, bang it, man, he don't mean, but. He, he, he dangerous. He's super dangerous. He's ultra dangerous. You know, so he telling me that he didn't talk to the dude. He said, I'm going to talk to him. I said, you ain't got to say nothing to him. I said, I'm just letting you know. You know what I'm saying? You got a little affiliation with him. I'm letting you know he get ready to get it, man. You know what I'm saying? Boo said, all right, woo, woo. So, lo and behold, like a week or something later, we go on our annual lockdown. That's when they come around to all of the sales, the whole compound on lockdown. They go from, from, from building to building. And they go in your cell, every cell on the compound, check all your merchandise. It's such a violation. They go through all your mail, your, your, your clothes, your cosmetics, your commissary, everything you have, they just pick all through it. You know, one of the worst parts about being in prison, you make you feel so, you know, inhumane that you have no, you know, control over even your own stuff. No type of privacy. All of that is dead in prison, bro. Dead. You don't have nothing. You know, they do what they want, when they want. How they want. That's just facts. So I, I never liked shakedowns. I never liked them at all. And back then, you would stay on lockdown maybe two or three weeks, you know, for them to do the whole compound. Later on in my bid, they shortened that stuff up because they knew it was wrong, whatever. They didn't have the staff or the capacity to do it. More like more more than often they used it so they could just be walking around doing nothing and we locked behind that cell. So dudes hated it. I hated it anyway. That's what was happening. We was on lock for a couple of weeks. We come off a lot, and when you come off a lot, you've been in that cell cooped up so long, when you come off the first two or three days, you still ain't going outside of the block. You will be inside of the block, but you can come out. When you're on lock, you can't even come out, but every three days to take a shower for like 10, 15 minutes, and you come out in increments, uh, two or three cells at a time, and the other two or three cells got to lock back in for you go back out to take a shower. So it was crazy, you know, and... So when you do come off, everybody come out in the block at the same time, it's only like four showers and you got 80 some people trying to get in the shower. So we rotating and rotating, getting in line to get in the shower. In the meantime, while we waiting in line to get in the shower, 
Dudes is out here talking, running to the phone. You ain't been able to use the phone for a couple of weeks. Uh, dudes sitting there playing cards. Dudes is, you know, running around trying to get things they ain't have. They done ran out of this, ran out of that. Asking for coffee. Asking for something to eat. This, that, and the third. So, dudes working out, you know, trying to, you know, get back into working out. Because you and you say you couldn't work out that much. You got to sell it. So, me and Boo out there, like I told you, he box, I box. So we out there, we working out, and then we started, you know, body punching, you know, hitting each other. I mean, we actually hit each other hard. That's what that's what you do. I was boxing, he was boxing. We, you know, we stand in shape. We 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 sitting there getting that work in. Boom, boom, boom. Hard hits, punches hard. Now, I done gave y'all the dynamics. I don't rock with this dude. He don't rock with me, right? This dude is cool with Boo, but he know what me and his association. We don't even. You know, understand that we don't even talk to each other, you know. So, we standing there hitting each other hard as the owner. What? You know, this chunk going to turn around and walk up to us and walk right in between. That's why we body punches. Like, I almost hit him at the back up. Like, what's up? And he walked. He turned and put his whole big back to me and look at Boo and say, y'all got to move from right here, man. I'm working out right here, man. Y'all take that somewhere else. And he said, and take this monkey looking MF witch. Man, <laughs> and I almost lost. I almost took off on him right there. I said, "What you say?" So he turned. He said, "You heard what I said." And I'm and I'm I'm ready to take off on him. And Boo said, "Man, boom, grab him and get him between." He said, "Man, I told you, man. What's up with you, man? You keep on saying things to me, man, man. Leave him alone, man. Leave him alone." He told me, "Man, I f that dude, man. I don't like him anyway. I'm gonna end up killing him. I'm telling you, I'm gonna end up killing him." I said, "Oh yeah." He said, "Yeah." So I said, "Okay." And right then and there, in my mind. Right then, at that second, I made up my mind. I said, nah, I'm going to kill you, bro. I'm going to kill you. You understand me? And I locked it in my mind. You know, and I said, okay, you got that, bro. You got that. Don't even worry about it. I said, man, boo, I'm gone, man. I ain't got time for this foolishness. And I walk away. He's steady popping off. Yeah, you better walk away. You better. And boo down there trying to talk to him. So I go upstairs, and I go to my room. When I go in my room, I sit down, and I try to collect my thoughts. You know, because I'm blood mad. And it's like he trying to humiliate me. He trying to test me. He trying to push me. You know, and I'm through with it. You know what I'm saying? So I look I, I, I look around my cell. I'm thinking, man, I said, Can I, should I get him? Hey, you know, I thought about it. I ran it over. I, 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 I made up in my mind. It, it ain't no other way. So I go in my hide spot. I go into Bama. I <laughs> I get that Bethlehem out, and it's a mean one, too. I'm talking about, man, this junk been in there for a minute. Didn't want to use, didn't want to pull it out. When you pull it out, you pull it out to use it, or you leave it where it's at. I get it out, man. It's a big piece of steel, man. Big, thick, rusty steel. Got rust on it. Probably about 12, 13-inch piece of steel, you know. And um, I had heard it in my mind somewhere. Foolishness, I know this crazy. I know this might be freaking out, but this is prison life, man. This prison life for real. I had it in my mind one day because the dude's so big and in my mind I'm running over the, the, him throwing that dude into the ice machine. I'm a little dude. I'm thinking if he get his hands on me, you know, Joe might turn out ugly. I ain't going to let that happen. So I had heard it in my mind one time that if anything pierced the heart, then a person just collapsed, right? So I'm thinking in my mind, if I if I hit him and hit him right in the, in, in, where it's in the back where his heart at, then if it pierced his heart, he just collapsed. You know what I'm saying? Fall down on the floor. I walk over to the the, the hot uh, 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 water machine. Act like I'm getting some hot water. Go to my cell. I'm just like everybody else in the park. I don't know what happened to him. He laid out in the park. That's my mind. That's my plan. You know? So that's what I'm thinking. So I come downstairs. And I got the thing on me. Right? I got my cup. Like I'm going to get some hot water. And I'm just standing around. I'm waiting. I'm watching him first. I'm watching him. See what he do. He over there doing some sit-ups. Right? Uh, at the back door, which is great because the, the vantage point uh, where you can see it from the booth is the showers right there, and you can't see over top of the showers to where the phone at and where the back door at when he's doing sit ups. So I can go over there and act like I'm on the phone and he's doing sit ups. Now, <laughs> now, this is what my plan was. When I seen him go do some sit ups, he did like 100 sit ups, he got up, he walked around, he came back, he did it again. Now, in my mind, I said, I'm going to go over here, act like I'm on the phone. When he go do sit-ups again, it was going to be the last thing he do. Because I was going to act like I was on that phone. And when he go right down there beside me, do them sit-ups, 
I was gonna take that Bethlehem and put it right in his forehead. I I I I, I, I know it sounds vicious, but that's just what was gonna happen because I won't go let him hurt me. He didn't already say they're gonna kill me. I believe him. You know what I'm saying? So I was gonna put it in his forehead and, and, and go to the hot water and leave just like that, you know? And he didn't go back and do no more sit-ups. So he changed my whole game plan right there. He went and started doing jumping jacks, right? So I kept watching. He did the jumping jacks. He did like a hundred and something jumping jacks, walked around, went back to start doing it again. So I changed my plan. I said, okay, when he go do some more jumping jacks, I'm going to go get him right there. So I waited. When he went back and walked around, he went to go back and do the jumping jacks. I made my move. I come up off the jump. I walk. I walk it towards him. I'm beelining towards him. He can't see me. He got his back turned. Now, man, you, I said this before in the other video when I was telling this story and dudes, dudes made comments when I told the story or parts of the story on another platform. So, oh, well, you, 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 you stabbed him in the back. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, a lion don't tell a gazelle he get ready to die. The gazelle should know that he should not be in the lion's vicinity. He should know if he tell me he going to kill me, then he should be prepared because I'm still in his vicinity. So, it ain't no uh, uh, rules in war. The rule is to win and survive. Because if you don't, you die. So that's just it. So when he went and started doing them jumping jacks, I come right behind him and right behind his heart where I was thinking that theory, and I hit him. <clears throat> and I hit him hard. I hit him so hard that Bethlehem went in him so easy that my hand hit his back like boom. And he just pulled up and like, ah! And he screamed and he looked and he turned around. But he didn't drop like I thought he was. So by him screaming and turning around, he's still up and active. So I'm like, whoa, what to do now? So I just charge him again. And I try to hit him in the face. And he put his arm up and it, it, the knife went in his arm and stuck through the other side of his arm. And it was it was in his arm. So he's jerking back and I'm jerking back. And I pull it out and he back up. And he's like, hold it. Wait a minute. Okay, man. Ah, right, you got it. You got it. I said, no, I told you to leave me alone, man. You said you gonna kill me, right? He was like, no, no, I right, man, I right. And I got him in the corner. He can't get out. Where we at is the corner right here. He got to come through me to get by me. So he backing up. He said, okay, man. All right, you got it, you got it. So really, I was in a rage at the time, and my mind won't, I won't think it right. I'm thinking about survival. And I heard boo voice cutting through, cutting through all the, all the noise because I heard people shuffling and looking like, oh, wow. You know, and I heard boo saying, bang, bang. And I look, I'm like, what? He said, leave him alone, man. Everybody looking at you, man. Leave him alone, man. He, he got it. He got it. So I looked at him. I said, man, you better stay away from me, boy. And I cuffed the joint up my arm. And I turned around and started walking away. I could see everybody looking. Everybody like stopped and paused in the block. They like, and it's like got dead silent in there. So I'm walking away. And I'm going back to my room. And all I heard is, I'll kill you. And I heard feet shuffling. So I turned around and pulled the, the Bethlehem back out. And he done... Walked up to the table where dude's playing cards at and snatched the dude's coat off his back and started wrapping his arm up. He said, I'm a kid. I'm a kid. I said, okay. So I turn around and I bring the joint back out. I start coming up. I said, you going to kill him? You going to kill him? I walk up on him. He starts circling around the table and I'm coming around one end. He going around the other end. And then next thing you know, he said, and he just dropped, fell on the floor. I walked around the table. I was standing over top. I could have killed him. I could have killed him. You know what I'm saying? And in my state of mind, I, I I I was about to, you know, so Boo hollered at me again. He said, that's it, man. That's it. So I just looked at him, and I, I went on to go upstairs. Now, he was in the cell with one of my homeboys, right? And this is just the craziness of prison. This is prison life. Man, my mentality and my adrenaline was flowing so much, and you be so paranoid because that's his cell partner. You don't know if his cell partner going to help him or not, whether or not even though he my homeboy. But I don't know because I'm in a fit of rage and I'm in a fit of paranoia. So um, I'm going upstairs and their cell is right at the top of the stairs. So his cell is standing in the cell. And when I catch his eye, he look at me like, and I took that as like, in my you know delusion is like, 
oh, you going to try to, you know, avenge him? You going to try to help? So I said, what, you with this? He said, no, nah, bank, no. Nah. And he reached up and started hitting the top of the door. When you hit the top of the door, that's how you signaling the police to close your door. This before we had all the push buttons and everything in the cell. So he like, nah, 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 close my door. Close. So the lady started closing his door, and I started advancing to his door. So when I get up to his door, his door closed, then it closed. So I go to the door, and I basically threaten him. I said, man, if you come out this cell and act like you trying to do something to me, I said, you going to get what he got. And he was like, bank, I ain't got nothing to do with that, man. I ain't got nothing to do with that, homeboy. I, ain't got... I said, I'm just letting you know, dog. He said, I ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm, 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 I'm gone now, you know what I'm saying? So I start walking back to my cell, and I go back to my cell. I walk in, he laid out there on the floor. I heard somebody go to the booth and tell him, say, man, y'all got to get somebody over here, man. Dude just fell in and cut his back on something. He bleeding out here. He unconscious. So the lady done called for help to come get him, and I done went, you know, to my cell. So I come back, I'm out my cell, and I'm leaning on the top rail, and I'm looking out at all the chaos like everybody else. So when I'm out there looking at it, I got the Bethlehem still on me. I'm super paranoid. So I remember my homeboy named Low, rest his soul, you know what I'm saying? He died in prison, you know. But I could remember him pulling up on to up on me, man. He was like, um, you still got that thing on you? I said, Yeah, he said, let me get it, man, so I can get rid of it. They 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 gonna be looking for it. I said, man, I ain't I ain't, I'm so paranoid and delusional. I said, man, I ain't getting that up, man. That dude might come back. He said, man. The man ain't coming back, bro. He might not make it. I said, man, I don't know. He might got some homeboys or something here. I said, I ain't getting He said, man, give me the junk, man. I'm telling you, man, you, you got to get rid of it. I said, no. I was being stubborn. You know, I'm green. I'm new. I ain't never did this before. And I'm paranoid. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who, who rock with him, who might. You know, dude, man, it, be, it, it just be crazy in there. You don't know what's going to go on. So I was I was being stubborn. I hold it on to it, right? So he said, all right. He go on back to his cell. I'm standing on there. Next thing you know, hundreds, all these police come running in. Not hundreds, but 10, 15, 20. Everybody lock up, lock up, lock up. Everybody go up, lock up, lock up. They run over and get the dude. You know what I'm saying? They take him out on the stretcher. I go and put the junk back in the bam. I got a, a super bammer. The, the dude that I heard the sale from, he told me about the bammer. He said he'd been in there for years. They never find anything in there. So I hid it in the bam. And um, I sit in there. I'm nervous, purpose. <laughs> I'm nervous, purpose. And sure, it's all outdoors, man. It wasn't. It, it, it wasn't even uh, 10, 15 minutes. They had took him out there and locked us down. They came right back up in there. Came right to my cell. You know, told me to come to the door, man. Turn around and cuff up. I said, "What's up?" I'm, 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 I'm like, I don't know what's going on. You know, deny, deny, deny. I said, what's going on? They said, you know what's going on? Come to the door. Come. I said, I don't know what's going on. So Lieutenant pushed the dude out of the way to get to the door. He said, man, what you do that to a big man for, man? What you do that for? I said, do what? He said, what you do that to big man for? I said, man, I ain't do nothing. He said, man, turn around and cuff up, man. Turn, turn around and cuff up. I said, what I'm, what I'm going to jail for? He said, turn around and cuff up. So I'm like, boom, I look at my celly, man. Take my celly, pack all my stuff, whatever, whatever. They cuff me up. They take me out. When they taking me out, they talking to me all the way, you know, to segregation, to the jail. They tell me, man, what you do that to a uh, big man for, man? What you do that for, man? You know, he, he he in bad shape, man. They get ready to put him on a helicopter. I said, bro, I ain't do nothing, man. Y'all got the wrong dude. I don't know what you talking about. He said, you, you know what we talking about. He said, man, he said you did it. I said, he said, I did it. He said, he said, you did it, man. I said, man, the man was unconscious. How you gonna say I did it? They said he he can't, he, he he in and out of consciousness. He said, you did it. I said, man, I ain't do it, man. He, he y'all might got the wrong dude. He might have, you might not understood what he said. He said, oh man, you you in you in a lot of trouble, man. He said, you in a lot of trouble. He said, it don't look good for big man. Now, I ain't gonna, I would be lying if I sit there and tell y'all, man, I won't scare to death. I, 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 I was scared to death, man. My heart was pounding. That, you know, I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. So they take me to jail. They take me in. They lock me up, man, put me in the cell, you know, and I keep on hearing them whispering and all of this foolishness talking about how bad off dude is and, man, uh, this this don't look good and all this. So, now, like I told you, when you by yourself, man, that's <laughs> That's the worst place you ever want to be when you got a lot of stuff on your mind, man. You and yourself and your demons is just a worst place to be. Because I'm in that cell with nothing because they ain't even bought no property or nothing yet. So I'm just in this dark cell with nothing but a bed and a toilet and all of this drama that I just bought upon myself. And I'm 
I'm second guessing myself now. I'm walking around the cell and I'm asking myself, what you do, man? You man, why you do this? Um, you didn't have to do this. You should have just let him run his mouth. He won't do nothing to you. Then I'm saying, well, what if he did do something to you? I mean, well, he didn't fight back. Well, then he say couldn't fight back. I mean, all of this stuff is just going through my head, man. It's just, it's just crushing me, you know? And I'm scared because I don't know what the outcome of him is. And they saying that he said I did it. So whatever the outcome is, you know, I'm going to get the blame for it no matter what. So the worst case scenario, if he die, I'm super late. And, man, I don't know what. I, I'm going to tell my mother that. I mean, I'm just, all of this stuff goes through your head. But this is the position that you put yourself in when you make that type of move. But, like I say, most of the time you feel like you, you have no choice but to make that type of move. And that's the position he had me in. I had no choice but to feel like I had to make that type of move. He told me verbally in front of the whole block that he was going to kill me. He said, I'm going to end up killing you. And I got to believe that you got to take every threat in prison seriously because the threat that you don't take seriously will be the threat that costs you your life. So I was moving how I, I, I believed I should have moved in, at the time, and I feel like I was securing my, 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 my safety because I ain't want to get hurt. I didn't want him to, I definitely ain't want him to kill me. And, and that's what I did. I did what I felt like I had to do. And man, but I was back there, man. And I ain't gonna tell you no lie, I was scared, I was nervous. Um, and they leave me in the cell, man. They don't bring me nothing. They don't bring me no sheets, no toiletries, no nothing. You know, for hours, man. It's like 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, you know, and I still ain't got nothing. I'm still in a dry cell. So while I'm in this dry cell, man, it's 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm laid down on hard steel, no nothing. They don't even have a mattress in there yet. So I'm on hard steel and I'm laid down in there cold as I don't know what. And all of a sudden, the door pop open. So I jump up because you train to get up when you heard that door in prison. So I jump up like, what's going on? And lo and behold, man, two officers walk in and right behind the officer, the major, then the warden, the assistant warden, and they come in my cell. They never do that because they cuff you up before they come in your cell and segregation. So I'm scared to death, man. The first thing in my mind, like, what's going on? So I get up and I'm standing up and I'm on guard like, you know, I don't know if they coming to beat me or what. So the warden say, uh, where the knife at? You know, where the knife at? The best thing you could do right now to help yourself is tell us where the knife at. This boy might not make it. We done sent him to the uh, MCV and he may not make it. And we, you need to tell us where the knife at. I said, man, I don't know where no knife at. I ain't, I don't know what you talking about. You do know what I'm talking about. This your last chance. You better tell us where the knife at. That's the only way you can save yourself. You in a world of trouble right now. But if that boy die, you in a whole lot of trouble. The best thing you can do is help yourself right now and tell us where the knife at. I said, man, I don't know where no knife at, man. I don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all got me back here. I ain't do nothing to you, man. Y'all need to let me make a phone call. I need to call my people, man, because I don't know what's going on. And they was like, <clears throat> Excuse me. He was like, last chance. This your last chance. I said, man, I don't know what y'all talking about. He said, leave him in here. Leave his ASS in here. Come on, let's go. They walk out of the cell and um, they close the door. And the last thing he said but before that door closed, he looked right at me and said, uh, uh, you better hope he don't die. Yeah, and that's exactly what I did, man. I hope he didn't die. I prayed he didn't die. I actually got on my knees and prayed he didn't die. You know, and... I'm back there and I'm going through all of that, man. And, um, you know, time going on and on and I'm still back there. I'm nervous. You know, you hearing whispers and everything that he died, you know, so you get, I'm getting nervous. I'm asking the police, you know, they acting like they don't know nothing. They don't want to tell you nothing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So it just was a crazy, uh, uh, uh nervous situation. You know what I'm saying? That I was going through. And in the meantime, like I say, you got, um, the warden, he telling me that he got 20, 30 something notes saying I did the situation. Say, I'm the one who did it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, that's crazy. But dudes will sell you out just like that because like I say, once they see you create some type of violence, number one, they don't want you around. Number two, they probably owe me money. Half of the block owe me money. So they feel like they can kill a debt and get rid of me at the same time. So that's the way they looking at it. It ain't no love in the penitentiary. Ain't no love whatsoever. So they willing to sell me down the river just for a couple of dollars. You know what I'm saying? But that's just how I go in prison. That's why I say it's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a different type of atmosphere when you in there. You know? So like I say, I'm back there and time and time go on, man. And like I say, the police, they won't tell you nothing what's happening. They keep all of that tight lip or act like they don't know what's going on. And um, after I was uh, back there too, you know, a couple of days after I had been back there, they went 
in the block. And they went in the block and told the block they were still back on lock. So now you got dudes that's mad at me too because they back on lock. They just come off a three-week lock. Then the dudes in there, they back on lock because of me. Oh, man, we on lock because of bank. You know, so, you know, that's just the way it go in prison. You know, but I'm going to get the blunt for all of that because I'm the one who put them back on lock by my actions. So now you got the police come back in there and they come in the pod and they announce in the pod, we give it a shake this block down again. We going through everything. If y'all got that knife, y'all can throw it out. Somebody throw it out on the pod. You ain't got to say who did it. Ain't nobody got to be responsible for it, but we need that weapon. If we get that weapon, y'all coming up off a lot. Y'all got 15 minutes to make a decision. We coming in here and turn the place up. So they leave. Now you got dudes whispering on the door. Man, somebody throw that joint out before we come off lock, man. Man, yeah, we ain't had nothing to do with that, man. Let's throw that knife out there, man. Woo, woo, woo. You know, so Boo, he get on the door. He like, man, what y'all talking about throwing that knife out there, man? The people trying to get shot up, murder charge or something. Y'all don't know what's going on. You might better not throw that knife out there, you know. So then they get quiet and all that little whispering and stuff. But only person could have threw the knife out there would have been my cellar because it was in my cell. And the doors is locked. But my celly ain't know where my Bama was. He didn't know where the night was itself. So he couldn't have threw it out there. So it just was a crazy situation, man. Um, you know, I, I mean, I couldn't understand it. But like I say, that's just how I go. But I had put myself in that position because of the actions that I made. But I was back there and I'm still nervous. I still don't know where the county is. I don't know what's going on with him. And as time went on, I think I was back there for maybe a couple of months, man. And, um... I heard that, you know, he had been on life support for like 40-some days, and he came through, he made it, you know what I'm saying? I never saw him again. You know, they put him on another institution when he came out the hospital. So, you know, that's just what it was. Later on in my bit, when I was boxing and everything, and I kept trying to get transferred, there was a dude that was real good on Nottaway that was my weight class and was boxing, and everybody was trying to get me to get transferred up there to box him, you know, because he was whooping everybody, and I wanted to go there, I wanted to fight him and everything, but... I could never get on there. They kept on telling me that I couldn't go to Nottaway, and I didn't understand why. But at the time, because like I said, I'm new to this, I'm green. But at the time, they had um, put me on the enemy list with them, where as to you had an incident that was like that, that, that was that violent or something, then they got y'all as keep separate. You can't never be together no more. All the time, he had got transferred there, but I didn't know it. So that was the whole reason why I could never get back on Nottaway. For all them years, you know what I'm saying? But I eventually ended up on Nottaway years later. I eventually made parole from Nottaway. But when I did ended up um, going to Nottaway um, years later, I went to Nottaway twice. I made parole from there, but I went there again in like the 90s, late 90s, 99, 98 or something. When I'm up there then, I go up there, and I remember getting in the block, and it was a dude that used to be in the block in the corner cell. He used to come out all the time and sit in his chair, big old dude. And um, I can remember from the first week I was in there, man, I just always felt the bad energy from the dude like he was always watching me or staring at me or something, you know. And I didn't used to go to lunch or nothing like that when I was up there or dinner. So I used to stay in there and work out in the block while everybody was gone. And it only be three or four or five people that may stay back. And I still just felt like this dude was always watching me, man. So I remember pulling up on him one day and asking, man, I said, man, what's up, man? He was like, what's up? I'm like, man, it just seems like you're always looking at me, man. You know me or something? And he looked me right in my eye. He said, yeah, I know. So I said, where you know me from? You know what I'm saying? And he was like, oh, hold up. And he got up and walked in his cell. So I ain't know how to take that. So I'm walking over, but like peeking in his cell, like seeing like what he was doing. I ain't know what, what the business was. So he come out to cell. He got a photo album. And he opened a photo album and he showed me pictures of him and Big Raymond on the weight pal, working out or whatever, whatever. So I look at it, and I'm looking at him. I'm on my defense. I'm, I'm like ready for whatever. So he was like, yeah, that was my partner, man. I said, okay, well, what's up? He said, nah, ain't nothing like that, man. He said, I'm just looking at you, bro, because for real, for real, I had heard all about the situation, and I knew, heard your name so much, because dude came up here after the incident. Me and him got cool. We was cool for years. He ended up just leaving. We was workout partners. He told me about the situation. He told me how it went down. He told me what happened. He said it was his fault. He was pushing stuff at you, and you messed around and did what you did. And, you know, he said, man, they taught him a lesson, man. It humbled him. It really humbled him. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, we ain't had no beef or nothing, but you can rest me sure the whole time I was there with him, I kept one eye on him because I didn't know because that's how I say dudes will smile in your face and put that knife in your back. You see what I'm saying? And you'll never know until the situation is over. So 
it was crazy, man. But these are all the things and the dynamics you get into, man, when you make a move like that. You know, you got to watch yourself for, for the rest of your time because you don't know who you around, who cool with him, who kin to him, who you might run into. So you always got to be aware once you, done, you know, put yourself in those situations where you in confrontation with dudes, you know, because it get deadly. And, you know, that was a deadly situation. So, um, yeah, man, but, 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 uh, I ended up staying on there for a while, man. I, um, in that hole, man, for uh, definitely over a year. I can't remember exactly how long I stayed back there that time. Probably all, close to two years. And, um, I ended up getting out because he won't there. And when I got out, you know, you so paranoid because that's like I said about all the, who, who, who really rock with him, who was cool with him. You know, now dudes know how you move. So dudes might, you know, you know, get in a conversation with you, then they gonna be looking to play for keeps. So all of that is on the table now. So you always gotta be prepared. You got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So I'm out here and I'm paranoid because this is my first time making a move like that. And now I'm back out here so I don't know who looking at me and what type of way or you know what what the dynamics is, man. And it won't even long after that, man. It was less than six months, man, when I told y'all about the video with me and Dixon, you know, ended up, you know, messing old boy up. You know what I'm saying? Old big boy too. And, um, and, you know, when I end up going down for that, man, they won't go on for it, man. That was, you know, like two incidents on there. And they, the, the, the institution was fairly new. Um, that was like the biggest incident they had on there prior to, you know, I mean, you know, you know, prior to that incident with me and Dixon, the biggest incident was the incident I had did since the institution had been open. So now my name involved up, man, that's, that's, <laughs> That's all they needed, man. I stayed back there again for a minute and ended up on Mecklenburg. That's just, that's exactly how I ended up on Mecklenburg with everybody, the home of the Bethlehem, everybody deadly, everybody dangerous. You see what I'm saying? So that was eventually how I ended up getting on there, man, because of the big Raymond incident and um and then the, the, uh, the big boy incident. So it was crazy, man. It was all life lessons, man. It was all learning experiences, man. And I was, I, I was, uh, I was lucky to come out of that stuff unscathed, man. And, you know, I ended up getting the charge, you know, uh, they charged me with uh, attempted murder. And God was on my side again, too, man, because when I went to court, you know, he came in there, too, and he, he acted like he didn't want to testify on me, but he had told the people that I did it. But when they asking him questions, he didn't want to answer. All he wanted to do was just stir me down. You know, just stare me down, mumble on his breath, say some obscenities. They kept telling him to stop. You know, he's still just looking at me. They talking to him. He won't pay attention. He's looking at me, you know, and the people just threw that stuff out of court, man, because they don't really care about you anyway. You know what I'm saying? You used two inmates locked up and you bringing this in a, a, court, a, a, a street court and they ain't got time for it. They, you know, they don't care what you, they want us to kill each other. So they ended up dismissing the joint, and I, I got away with that. But they, you know, like I say, institution, you know, they charge you with it anyway. So I had to pay for it. It's on my institutional record. And, you know, like when I was on the other show, I showed y'all the paperwork for that charge. But um, like I say, it was a learned experience, man. It was something that I look back on now in retrospect, and I probably could have handled it different. I probably should have handled it different. But at the time, man, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about survival, and I'm thinking about me and, and not getting hurt. And that was my main priority, man. So I moved the way I felt like I should have moved when I did what I did. And, um, I, you know, uh, I'm just lucky and thankful, man, that I came through it, you know, and I lived to tell about it. But, um, yeah, I don't know what eventually happened to Big Raymond. I heard <clears throat> he got out. I don't know what, what the situation is with him. You know, I don't wish him no ill will. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually glad I never ran into him again because I felt like if I would have ran into him again, I would have had to do something because I felt like he was going to do something. So, you know, it worked out for the best, man. And um, situations don't always work out for the best in prison when you're in those situations. <coughs> Excuse me. It could always turn out deadly. Every situation, every altercation in prison can turn out deadly. So, you know, but that's just the, the belly of the beast. You in there, you in, a, you in a violent environment with violent dudes and you in a powder keg. So it's all crammed together and it's survival of the fittest, man. So, um, yeah, but that was the first time that I ever had to use that Bethlehem. I wish it was the last time. Unfortunately, it wasn't. I'll tell y'all about those incidents in future days if y'all want to hear about them. But I had to tell this story, man, for Josiah. Josiah wanted to hear this story in completion. So he felt like y'all should hear it. And that's why I told it. But um, 
It's nothing to glorify. It's it's uh definitely not a situation that I would wish on anybody to be in, either on his side or my side. Because like I say, it, it it's um it's unnecessary and it all comes out of people dealing with the emotions and the suppression and the depression and the oppression that they end by being in prison, man. So the best remedy for that is to not go. To not put yourself in a position to go to prison. To not put yourself in a position where you going to have to hurt somebody. And all of that comes with being in prison, man. So, you know, like I say, it's a blessing and every lesson. And the blessing is that I made it through that. That Raymond did survive. And life goes on, man. And it's life lessons learned. So, man, for all y'all young cats out there, man, y'all need to know this is what goes on in prison, man. This, this is an isolated incident, but it's... Hundreds of incidents like this go on every day in prison, and it ain't a place that you want to be. So if you out here in this free world, man, you better cherish this freedom, and you better try to do something that's legit, and you try to stay out here with your family, your kids, and enjoy life, man, because that's what I'm trying to do now, and I'm glad to be out here. I'm blessed to be out here, and if you out here, you need to think the same way and move the same way. Cherish your freedom and take care of your freedom, man. Um, with that being said, man, I'm glad y'all took time to listen to me, man. If you like this video, man, you know, put a like on it, share this video, because some kids need to understand this is what's going on in prison. These young thugs out here, you need to understand this is what's going on in there, man, and um, it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty at all. So um, if you ain't subscribed too, go subscribe, man. We got more content coming, man. 2022, we're going to keep it moving. I love y'all out there. TBP, stand up, man. And uh, be safe, be smart, make good decisions. I'll see y'all next time. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.